Brad Chidester. Uh, Brad has been with us before, and he's going to share a little bit about enhancing human performance through technology. Brad, join us on stage. Welcome back. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. Thank you for always putting me after someone super smart. <laughs> Let me bring you back down to my level. Um, so. Thanks for having me here. It's always interesting uh, to hear all the different perspectives. And that's one thing I'm going to talk about today is different perspectives when it comes to human performance optimization, right? So last night, some pretty cool perspectives from a musical standpoint, a lot of human performance optimization going on there. I mean, Ronan, his whole life has been, like he said, kind of perseverance and persistence and, you know, being a high level athlete and then operating at a high level with the musical thing is amazing. So. I'm going to go into just a little bit of who I am, although we do get little uh, cards of uh, whoever in the bios and everything. So I'm um, kind of my role's broken up a little bit. So I'm the strategic director for Joint Task Force Talos, which has been dubbed the Iron Man effort, which we try to stay away from. So it's awesome to announce it on the stage. But uh, tactical assault light operator suit. So how do we give the highest performing technologies and enable the uh, individual uh, spe special operations uh, guys to do their job? Um, the other one is I'm the Warfighter Systems Architect for Draper Labs. Draper is a large nonprofit organization attached to MIT. They do a lot of really cool science work that's way smarter than me. So I just try to go through and cherry pick the different things that have application. Um, and then I'm also a special advisor for a place called Softworks. Softworks is an innovation and collaboration space. We call it a collision zone, where, you, where individual operators and teams of operators come in and they deal with the acquisition professionals and government folks and also developers and people with great ideas like you. So if I work out, I'll do my slide here. OK, I drew that last night. So there we go. <laughs> All right, so uh, the guy from Los Alamos had some really interesting slides. And I started thinking yesterday, I was like, I got to have some scientific stuff. So here's me being scientific. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, and I repurposed the paper, so I recycled. Um, hence the other side of the cowabunga dudes. So. This is kind of the way, from, from a perspective of someone that deals with special operations guys and elite athletes, and we call them tactical elite athletes, this is the way, one, one way to think about human performance optimization. So when we get um, the operational end users and they go through their training and everything, we get them when they're super, super physical and super you know, young guys, very physical, and they have a lot of lessons to learn, but they're operating at high you know, physical capacity. As their career goes on, You've heard the term afraid force. Well, we use them up, right? So my, again, from a little bit from my perspective, I was an athlete before I did the job I do now, and you're basically kind of a meat bag for performance, right? You're getting paid, and uh, you know you, they're squeezing every bit of performance they can out of you. This is the same thing, right? So these guys and girls that you know, protect our nation, they do a job for America. It's physical performance. So their physicality kind of goes down throughout their career. They get beat up. They have musculoskeletal injury rates. That's the number one thing that keeps special operations guys off of team is musculoskeletal injury. So as they kind of go on, they're exposed. They, you know, they ride on fast boats. They jump out of helicopters. They do a lot of crazy stuff for our country. But they're also getting smarter. They're learning lessons, right? So the crusty old master chief or you know, special operator of the, uh, that's been in for a long time is super smart. He knows how things act. He knows how things work. So, as you go along, you kind of find this golden performance zone, right? And that's kind of what we're trying to keep these folks. And technology, which I'm going to go into and, and talk about specific applications, technology is what we're trying to do is enable us to expand that golden zone, right? It gets back to a people metrics conversation. So as an athlete, whenever I was doing squats or something, I always had someone, you know, four trainers there watching me making sure I didn't hurt myself because they paid money for me. So it takes millions and millions of dollars to train, equip, and maintain operations, guys. So we need to protect our investment. All right, there we go. So how do we do this? We take a holistic view, right? And I promise Rob will get into technologies too. So we take a holistic view. So this is a kind of an effort that they are talking about doing databasing, right? So having an umbrella architecture to fold in different aspects of human performance optimization. And I, I won't go into a lot of explanation, but you can see multi-variable, right? Not, not just physical, but you have nutrition, exposure, biometric, mental. Um, another thing we talked about a lot, creativity. You know, these, these guys and girls are tactical MacGyvers, right? You've heard the moniker before, you give them a roll of duct tape and a pistol and they're gonna solve the world's issues, right? So, you know, how can, how can you enable that tactical MacGyver with technology? 
So some examples uh, of future tech, and again, let me give you a real quick perspective. So <laughs> it's a funny kind of story that I thought about telling earlier, but I have a nine-year-old daughter and I was driving her to soccer practice the other day. Her name's Brooke. She's an amazing kid. So I'm driving her to soccer practice and she's freaking out in the back seat. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to keep it together because you got a nine-year-old girl yelling at you freaking out. And so I'm like, oh, Jesus. And I said, Brooke, what's wrong? She said, I forgot my soccer socks, so I can't find one. I was like, oh, no. So I look at her and she has her shin guards on and it's super hot. I live in Florida. And so I look at her and I was like, you know what? It's probably a good thing you forgot your socks. And she looks at me like, what? I said, well, you're going to be more aerodynamic. You're going to have better thermal mitigation. You're not going to be as hot as the other kids. I was like, your human performance is going to be off the chain. And she kind of thought for a second. She goes, yeah, you know, that's it. So it's, a, it's kind of a perspective. So again, it's all about perspective, right? So some, some future technology examples that are kind of hitting, hitting the application side now. Um, we talked a little bit last year with uh, Monier Zock, had some really good examples of the Olympic stuff. I took the tactical view of it. So biosignal monitoring, you just heard Andres talk about that. So that's all about baselining. So understanding the human dimension, right? In human performance optimization, human, most important thing. So understanding the human dimension. So if you can baseline and understand someone's performance characteristics or where they are, you can begin to augment them with technology in the right way. And not might not always be the right way, but you'll know if you understand the baseline. So high fidelity biosignal monitoring, kind of like he was working on. Um, accurate, non-invasive EEG, right? Kind of getting inside the control loop of the person. So, you know, it's all about sensing, control theory, and then action, right? So the, the, the magic pixie dust there is control theory. If anybody has this figured out, please, I need to really talk to you. So, again, one way to do that is trying to get inside the control loop of the brain, to the muscles, to action, to understand that. Epigenetic, uh, excuse me, epigenetics, epigenomics, so understanding at a bio level. Uh, biohacking kind of goes on that same thing. Human augmentation, which we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, and prehab and rehab technologies. So it's not all about just you know, tactical things, it's about prehab and rehab. So I'm gonna run through some quick ones. So some very smart friends uh, sent me some cool stuff and I wish I had some to show you, but I always have to hold back a little bit so Rob will invite me next year, so maybe next year we'll have technologies. Uh, the Harvard Vs Institute worked on DARPA Warrior Web Project. This is uh, some of their, uh, their efforts trying to decrease uh, metabolic cost. Johns Hopkins APL, which uses a DARPA advanced prosthetics program, getting inside the mind action loop. So this guy's controlling his prosthesis, his prosthetic with his mind. MIT Lincoln Laboratories. So they actually have chips that you can swallow and it tells you about heat, stress. It tells you all these biological things about your body to baseline you and understand the physiological characteristics of where you're going. Uh, they also have a center for modeling simulation where you can put a person in an immersive environment and understand uh, how they react, how they, you know, different stimuluses. And then uh, they have a kind of a cool device that monitors your metabolic energy through your breath. So you're breathing into this thing and it's giving you your VO2 max and everything, but it's portable, cheap, easy to use. Draper, place where I work. So situational awareness wear that kind of gives you multivariable uh, AR, VR, you know, kind of really getting the body uh, and the mind connected. Biomimetics, organ on a chip type stuff. How does, how, do, how does the body react to drugs? Well, do a modeling simulation to like, figure that out first. And breath analyzers, again, really cool one. The Wearable Robotics Association, if you've never heard of it, an ex-DARPA program manager uh, started a, a worldwide association for exoskeletal development. This dives into healthcare, this dives into the automobile, uh, the automotive industry, using you know, factory workers to work above their heads with exoskeletons to uh, you know, not have them get uh, hurt and prolong their careers. So that's one way that robotics and everything is not gonna take over jobs, but it'll actually prolong the careers and improve the health of the workers in these facilities. It also gets in the Department of Defense and the elderly care, healthcare, things like that. One example, Sarcos, a split off of the Raytheon company. Sarcos is um, one of the at, the, at the leaders, the forefront of doing some exoskeletal technologies, robotic technologies. They also, if I'm not mistaken, they make the little mirage fountain, you know, things, the gizmos that control the things, that's kinda cool. Um, and then, uh, this is an interesting one I, I wanna bring up because I met these guys at Ken last year. So this is one way that this network thing actually works. So Ken, uh, <laughs> yeah. So 
I met these guys, they approached me, and they have a, a, a novel interactive neuromuscular stimulation device. And this is an example of being proactive, not reactive, right? This thing actually, instead of, hey, you have an injury, it's gonna treat your injury, it actually goes out and finds the injury and finds the actual cause root problem of the, the symptom that you're feeling and then treats that root problem to, one, you, you won't get the injury as much, and two, you'll kind of understand it better. And I think that's all I have. So Brad had a, um, uh, a lab where he calls it the collision zone, and you met Ronan Tynan last night. I did, yeah. So those of you who weren't with us, he's a phenomenal Irish tenor who also happens to wear two prosthetics uh, under his knees, won 20-some 20 20 medals in uh, Paralympics over the years. They are now connecting. He said, I want to visit you. I want to find out what you're doing. He said, I want to find out what you think about what we're doing. And uh, talk about never leave serendipity to chance. Thanks yeah, again. Absolutely, man. Thank you.